How to spot a bad car salesman instantly. Today I'm hitting 13 car salesman red flags that should be deal killers for you. They certainly are for me. Ignore these red flags and you'll either waste a ton of time with an idiot or you'll be driving home in a car you'll soon wish you never had purchased. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? This video is brought to you by The Homework Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a very savvy group of auto experts in your corner. To the disappointment of some car dealers out there, we're on a mission to create the smartest car buyers in the country. If you appreciate The Homework Guy videos and you want to support our efforts, there are plenty of ways for you to get on board and help us. Let's tackle the huge problem of the bad car salesman. Unfortunately, they are in abundance out there, so you'll have to do a little sorting, but it is so worth it in the end. Here's why. One of the biggest keys to getting a great car deal is actually finding a great car salesman. It's difficult, I admit that, but not impossible. Unfortunately, the good guys in the car business are outnumbered in a sea of incompetence, but today we're going to help you sort out those bad car salesmen quickly so you can find good help much faster. When you know how to spot a bad car salesman, you'll improve your future car deals immediately. There are 13 red flags. When I'm on a car lot, the first red flag comes out immediately when the guy is nothing more than a loser. More red flags come in rapid succession after that. I can literally be gone in five minutes and so can you because the sleazeballs just can't help themselves. I don't wait to see 13 red flags and neither should you. You can actually leave on the very first one. I wait for a second or third red flag just as a courtesy to the poor guy because I want to give him a chance and I also want to change the car business. So I give him a few extra chances, but then I roll. Are you ready for this? Let's get to it. 13 red flags from a bad car salesman. Number one, super high enthusiasm. This is just weird, way over the top enthusiasm, like theater level over the top. A normal greeting between two strangers is nothing more than, hello, how are you? Tell me how I can help. Or something like that. When somebody on a car lot talks to you like they're jacked up on Red Bull, that's a serious red flag. This false motivation does two things. It actually helps the car salesman compensate for the guilt for trying to snowball you. Kind of makes them numb. That's why the trainers push this technique. They tell the salesman they just aren't excited enough if they're not selling everything. The false enthusiasm is also designed to put you on your heels because, quite frankly, it surprises you. Almost nothing good is going to happen if this guy doesn't stop the hyper-excitement mode. He's like, hey man, I'm so glad to see you guys. What an awesome family. Oh, where'd you come from? Yeah, that don't fly. Don't put up with this nonsense. This is where I hold up my hand and say, stop. I'm going to give you a second chance and pretend you didn't just do all that song and dance stuff. Take a deep breath and try again. If he doesn't get it and fails to immediately come down, you know, to planet Earth, well, that's when I say, you know, I'm going to get me a couple of Red Bulls so I know where you're coming from. And that's when I leave. It's a one-strike opportunity. Number two, the immediate pitch. Starting with telling you what an awesome dealer you just arrived at, to the amazing inventory of cars they have, to the Superman finance guys they have, you know, in that back office who will rip you off later. It all comes out immediately. The bad car salesman pitches you on things faster than a farmer pitching crap out of the back of the barn. If you can't get the guy to stop trying to sell you the moon, well, just walk away slowly and say, a small step for man, a giant leap for mankind. Well, you know, it's monumental, so you might as well feel proud of walking away. You're helping us change the car business by denying a sale to an idiot. Number three, tons of pressure. You know exactly what I mean. You can hardly breathe. It's like facing a goalie on a soccer field. The bad car salesman will stand in front of you and do whatever they can to stop you from even thinking about anything other than what they are offering. The experience is crushing, making you very uncomfortable. You don't need any excuse to end this. You only need to have the courage to say, I'm here for one thing and one thing only. Get out pen and paper and write this down. And I make them do it. If you can't deliver on it, I'm happy to say goodbye and continue my car shopping elsewhere. That's exactly what I tell them. Then I tell them exactly what I want. If he doesn't get it immediately, then I'll say, someday you'll go far, but not today. 
and not with me. And that's when I see my way to the door. Number four, he hammers financing and loan qualifying right up front. Are you paying cash? Are you planning to finance? Do you know what your payment goal is? How much are you paying now? Do you know what your credit score is? Yeah, you just get bombarded with questions like that. The guy will be nuts about having you fill out an application and getting the finance ball rolling. This is where you say, thanks for reminding me that I need to be talking to my own banker. And then you leave without an explanation. Number five, it's all about the salesman. The bad guys in the car business subscribe to the WIIFM channel. That's the what's in it for me channel. They don't really care about you while being very much into themselves. They wear slick clothes. You're hit by a heavy wave of very expensive cologne and endless rambling about how amazing they are. You'll hear in no uncertain terms that you are in the best of hands. It's time to advise him of the obvious. The only thing you're missing, buddy, is a mirror. And then you hit the road. Someday he might actually remember you, probably while he's admiring himself in the mirror. Number six, they don't understand what it's like to be in your shoes. This is absolutely key for the salesman to understand you. The bad salesman is just too impatient to get to know you and wants to cut to the chase. And that is getting his hands on your money. It's never occurred to them that buying a car is just as big a decision as like moving or picking a new college to go to. Do business with people who have a little patience, who want to understand where you're coming from. When he's asking for your business and doesn't have a clue who you are, it's time you say, you know, it's been interesting not getting to know you. And then you leave. Number seven, there's only superficial value or what I call lukewarm value in what they're offering. You know exactly what I mean. They hammer all the features, all the bells and whistles, and entirely avoid the end result of what a good car deal actually looks like. Whenever you've been presented something in life that has clear value to you, you know what I mean. You want to move right up on the end of your seat and learn more. Well, you're super interested. That's why when it's superficial value, they're trying to make valuable to you. You're only sort of interested. You're being sold something you don't really care much about. And you know the difference. Time to say, that stuff reminds me of a penny. Interesting, perhaps, but not worth very much. And that's when you drive off, knowing that somewhere out there, Abe Lincoln is probably smiling right now. Number eight, they can't understand the word no. We did an entire video on this subject. Make sure you see it. You'll know exactly what I mean. No means no. Only do business with people who understand that word. Number nine, lack of sincerity. I don't know about you, but I have a very sensitive BS meter when it comes to sincerity. Everything feels fake with an insincere salesman. They skirt around things that need to be said, and they don't ask questions that need to be asked. It feels weird. They come off like a plastic banana. When there's no connection between you and the salesman, you should just leave. A person who is actually in tune with you would actually see this lack of interest on your part and might say, are you sure you don't want to just start over or try this another day? A sincere person isn't afraid to ask questions like that. An insincere person won't ask you anything other than what your monthly payment goal is. Number 10, the two option solution. A bad car salesman offers it to any challenge or objection you raise. It doesn't matter what it is. Everything you say that they didn't want to hear results in them running down a new goat trail that always has a fork in it. It goes one of two ways, both leading to the sale that they want. When it feels like they're trying to steer you, it's time to say, you know, buddy, you need to go on a road trip with somebody else and then get behind the wheel of your own car and leave. Number 11, they don't tie your real needs to real solutions that the car offers. The solutions they present are more on the lines of what most customers want. I can't stand the most customers phrase or the our customers nonsense. I don't care what any other person on the planet wants in a car when I'm there. I only care about what I need in my vehicle and he better be listening closely. If he drops that most customers line on me too many times, I say, I I'm really sorry to interrupt the fun that you were having with all those other customers today. And then I go. Number 12, it's not a two-way dialogue. 
The salesman keeps talking because he's trying to avoid questions or objections you may have. You find that you are almost silent and you only get to speak with his permission. Seems funny, but that's true. Have you ever been on that annoying phone call that you thought you couldn't hang up on but wished it would have ended 30 minutes ago? That's what the conversation is like with a bad salesman. He talks a mile a minute like you signed up for a seminar and whatever he's peddling that day. When the information flow has you feeling like a dog who has his head out the window, well, time for you to say, too bad I can't stick around for the ending. I'm sure it's amazing. And then you get out of there. Number 13, no communication loop. Real communication comes with an effort to understand you. In real conversations, we use what are known as feedback loops because we aren't trying to force each other into anything and we actually want to know that people got us. We ask each other follow-up questions that are very natural questions. Then we confirm what we thought we heard. There's a communication loop. You get none of this from the bad salesman. The only loop in his tactic is to constantly quote himself. Like I said earlier, he goes on, this is when you quote yourself. This isn't my first rodeo. And then you ride off into the sunset. I hope you learned today that meeting a bad car salesman is a little like trying a new food that you know you don't like the moment it hits your tongue. You're inclined to spit it out. A bad car salesman has the same effect on you. Trust your gut and then leave. Before you go car shopping, watch this video again. It's the goal of everyone on the Homework Guy team to not only turn each of you into the best equipped car buyers out there, but to also change the car business. When you walk away from a bad car salesman, you punish the behaviors that nobody wants. They either learn or leave and everybody wins either way. If we made you a smarter car buyer today and you appreciated the video, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below using hashtag the homework guy. You can also email us at info at the homework guy .com. If it's a contract review you're looking for, we do those for free. Just add contract review request as you're seeing on the screen here to the email title and we'll likely get back to you. We actually search for emails with that in the title. Hundreds of emails pour in, so please be patient with us. If you love what we do and want to leave a tip on either PayPal or Cash App, the links that you're seeing appearing right here, well, make sure you find them in the description box down below or just check us out on the web. There are also lots of other ways to support us and we greatly appreciate everything you do. Your efforts help us get the word out and defeat those bad guys in the car business who still haven't learned that fairness and honesty is the best business model. Thanks everyone for stopping by to check us out today. We'll see you in our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.